Hey everybody, in this video we are going to be talking about five tips for making better music. And these are my personal tips that I've kind of cooked up and I really think that my perspective is not really out there in the YouTube world. And I want to bring it to you, see what you think, uh, and let me know in the comments whether it resonates with you and whether you really feel it. Okay, so I'm going to jump straight in to number one, focus on yourself. Focus on your tastes, focus on your influences, and focus on your passion. So focus on the self. I think that we live in a world where we compare ourselves to everybody else. So creatively, we have artists that we really like, and we make music, and then we compare ourselves to them. Now, I'm not talking about referencing tunes. I think it's very important to have a reference track. That's a completely different topic. What I'm saying is, people are worried about copying people are worried about sounding the same as this other artist and this devours them creatively i feel if you take all of your tastes all of your interests all of your influences you put it in a big pot you melt it all down and then you compare what you have to every other person in the world you have a completely unique concoction in front of you Nobody is made up of the same pieces that you are. That means you're unique. So if you take a bit of your taste here and a bit of your taste here, you put it together and you keep reiterating that over and over and over and over and over again. And you're pulling influences from far beyond the music that you simply listen to. You will be unique. You don't have to worry about anything at that point. You will be unique. Uh, I was having a chat with some producers here in Melbourne recently, and I heard a brilliant thing from one of them, where he was saying that back in the day, and still now, but back in the day, he was listening to a lot of these artists that pioneered the Xenon scene. So artists like Sun Control Species, Shadow FX, uh, Sentient, all of these legends from back when that scene was growing. And if you guys don't know any of those artists, I would recommend looking them up. There's some really cool tunes. So anyway, these artists were uh, writing tunes and they were all really interesting and really unique. And this guy was saying, well, what he, what he did is he took a little bit of what this guy was doing, a little bit of what this guy was doing, a little bit of what this guy was doing, and he put it all together. And then he said, they can't collaborate with one another, but I can make them all collaborate together in my head. And I thought that was brilliant. That's a brilliant way to think about things. You can also pull in uh influences from bands from from all other influences into the electronic world and you should really be doing that and you should be thinking of ways where you can really incorporate that good example is i listen to a lot of deftones a lot of their drumming patterns would be awesome for putting in tunes um it's difficult to do it with the trance that i make but if i was to produce other genres it would be really sweet number two create a ritual around the experience so I believe that it can really help if you try and create a vibe uh, in your studio and you try and manifest creative energy uh, one way or another. Uh, whether you believe in this sort of more airy fairy approach or not, I think that the practice of mindfulness and the practice of like calming yourself and trying to get yourself into a flow state is extremely important. And I think that you should look up flow states and you should try and understand how they're induced. And I think that if you go about having a ritual, it can really help that. So what I used to do is, and I still do, I have to basically say to myself the night before, tomorrow is the day where I'm writing music and I'm not doing anything else. I need to kind of pretty much just go, tomorrow is a write-off except for making music. I don't deal well with having other things on my mind that I have to do, even if it's simply like at five o'clock. I need to go and deposit some money into the bank, right? If I get up at nine o'clock, it's hard for me to get in that mood because I'm just sitting there thinking like, shit, at five o'clock, I really need to go and do something. And that's on my mind and it's stopping me from really getting into the moment. So I think that for me, it works really well when I just basically write the day off. I'm not going to do anything else but produce music. So far, so good. So I would wake up in the morning, back in the day, and uh, my weekends were written off always for music, almost always for music. And I would wander down to the local um, 
like shopping complex, go in there, grab coffee. And on that walk, didn't allow myself to have too many distractions. This social media generation is toxic for our focus and for uh, thinking that we're unique, uh, thinking that we're, we are special. We're always comparing ourselves to other people. You're comparing your happiness to other people. So stop it. Um, but anyway, so I'd get the coffee, I would be walking, and my mind would be ticking over all of the things that I could do, all of the different influences that I could pull in, all of the creative techniques that I could try that I hadn't tried before, but I was having ideas for shit I could try. So that was really cool. And I feel like I've lost that a little bit as I've become a more experienced producer. And I'm on the quest to find it. Uh, and when I do, I'll keep you informed. So that's number two. Number three is bring a message through your music. Now, there is a brilliant man called Simon Sinek. And what he's done is he's studied the high performance companies all around the world. And he has come together with what makes them great. And he does a TED talk. So jump on YouTube. You're already on it. So uh, go up into the search, Simon Sinek and um, TED. Google that and you will find his talk at TED. What he talks about is how Apple and other companies have become so popular. And it comes from basically the why or the meaning of something. Why does Apple make great products? Well, they make it so that your life is easier because they like simple, elegant solutions. And they tell you this and you connect with that reason why. So if you're making music and your vibe is all about love, you want to spread a loving vibe throughout your music. First of all, say it. I want music that expresses my love. And then when you've made that track and you're posting it up on Facebook, you say, I made this track from a place of love. I made it because I like expressing myself and I want to share that with the world. What's going to happen? People, maybe people that already know you, people all around the world are going to read what you've just said. They're going to pick up on that vibe already and then they're going to give your music the chance and they're going to listen to it and they're going to feel that loving vibration that comes through the speakers because it comes from you and it comes from your intention and it comes from why. Why do you do what you do? So I think it's very important to, to really imbue your music with a meaning and a message. I think it's extremely important. When I listened to Corn a lot as a kid, I struggled a lot to understand why they were so angry. I loved metal, but I wasn't a traumatized kid. I didn't really have too much trauma that was bothering me, but I just loved metal. Now, as I've gotten older, I really understand it, and I really see how necessary it is for that type of music, because kids were very traumatized. Kids are very upset. There's a lot of people out there that don't have as good a life as what I've experienced. And they needed an outlet. They needed these older artists to be saying, I've been through some shit. You're going through some shit too. We're going to get through this shit together. And I think that that's beautiful. It's necessary. And I really think that you should spread your message through your music, whatever it happens to be. Number four is be patient be patient with your music and learn to look at yourself objectively. If you're playing your music to people and you're making excuses for it, you're not ready. You're not ready to be releasing music. You need to sit, excuse me, you need to sit behind your music confidently. You need to question yourself as to whether you're ready to be releasing music uh, and I think that it's much better for a musician to come in up here than down here and then trying to crawl your way up. Artists plateau in terms of their proficiency. You can plateau and then you can go into another phase of trying to bring your yourself up and then plateau again. So, you know, you're not always going to plateau at that level, but basically once you get to a plateau and what you're producing is consistent, you're consistently writing good tunes that you're confident in playing to people 
you're not worried so much anymore about the production of things. You're not worried so much anymore about your melodic composition. You know that everything in that tune is is pretty much on point. And you're making multiple tunes that are like that. That's when you're ready to be releasing music. You don't want to be outdoing yourself majorly every time you finish a tune. You will when you're beginning. You will constantly be doing that. But I really think it's more healthy for you as an artist. I think your music will travel further when you are fully ready and you bring yourself out and you have a bunch of tunes that are ready to start getting released on a regular schedule. You have your social media campaign organized and you really start pushing everything uh, in a methodical way. So if you're a musician who's who's still not 100% confident, but you're trying to release music, I think that this is maybe not such a good idea. I think that you should stay in the studio, you should focus on getting your production better, and that way you're not going to burn out. You're not going to be worried about following up tunes with other banging tunes because you know that you're capable. So that leads us on to the fifth. Number five is finish your tunes. That is the most important message for anybody who wants to be a successful artist. You need to make sure that you can finish tracks. If you always have a library of 100 half-baked ideas and no finished tunes, you're never going to have releases. And you're never going to have that full closure of going through the entire process from the creative phase to the mixing phase and to the mastering phase. I really can't stress that enough. You should be finishing your tunes and getting closure on them because every time you finish and complete that process, you can then look at that track and try and look at it externally, see what's good about it and see what's bad about it and then try and maintain what's good in the next track and correct what's bad in the next track and constantly reiterate, reiterate, reiterate all the way until you're writing tunes that are truly seamless. And that's when you're ready to release your music and get out there into the world. And that's how you're going to become recognized. If you're the guy that's putting out sort of amateurish tunes, I'm not saying that you're not going to get somewhere eventually. But I just think that maybe you are limiting yourself by trying to run before you're properly, confidently walking. So I hope that that helps you all. Let me know what you think, like I said, in the comments below. We can have a discussion about it. And if you have ideas for other videos that I can make, leave it in the comments as well. Uh, uh, Other than that, I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.